Greeting parents, thank you so much for logging in. We are super excited to share this dual enrollment information with you on how your student can earn college credit in high school. And I see we have people logging in, lots of people logging in, so we're excited. You guys are here to learn about this information. And so as we get started and letting everybody in, um, we do have lots of representation here that will answer all your college admissions questions. We also want to let you guys know, please answer in the Q, uh, ask your questions in the Q&A and not in the chat box. Please submit all of your questions in the Q&A section and not in the chat box, and we will respond to your Q&A questions. So we will get started. So tonight we have with us from the Georgia Department of Education, we have Ms. Jennifer Feeney, and she's going to talk about the dual enrollment process, an overview of it. And some of you guys may have had students in the process maybe a year ago, two years ago. So we're going to talk a little bit about some of the changes as well. And so Ms. Feeney, you're up. All right. So um, first of all, I, I would like for you all to know that we in Georgia are very blessed with our dual enrollment program. Many, many, most states don't have the, the level of accessibility to dual enrollment and the amount of funding that we provide for dual enrollment for our high school students here in the state of Georgia. So be proud of that and know that we are, we are really lucky to have such a robust dual enrollment program. And so why would you want to do that? What are some of the benefits of dual enrollment? Um, one of them, of course, is that it just increases exposure to college level classes while still in high school. Um, it gives students that, that um, firsthand experience of what a college course is actually like while they're still in high school. Um, it does allow students um, some greater flexibility, particularly if they are interested in an academic course or a, maybe a career pathway that their high school is not able to offer, they can access it at the college sometimes. And so that gives kids a lot more flexibility with their schedule and with the courses they can take. It does provide for an easier and, and generally speaking, much more successful transition once they do graduate from high school and go on to college. Students who have some dual enrollment experience um, data would, would tell us do much better in college. They're much more likely to graduate from college. Um, it does, of course, because our dual enrollment program in Georgia is free or 99% free, um, reduce cost to the families, um, of course, because tuition, mandatory fees, textbooks, all are um, covered under our dual enrollment program. Uh, by definition, in dual enrollment, students are receiving both high school credit and college credit simultaneously. Okay, next slide. Students can attend multiple colleges. So if, if they want, if you've got a student who wants to take perhaps the CTAE course at a technical college over at Southern Crescent, but they also wanna access um, perhaps a foreign language course or something like that at Clayton State, um, they can go to more than one college. They are limited regardless of how it's put together to 15 hours a semester or 12 hours a quarter. Um, and Georgia Military will be on to talk a little bit later. They are on a quarter system, which operates a little differently than semester. Um, dual enrollment students are still high school students. So they can participate in extracurricular activities. They can be on sports teams. They can be in the spring musical. They can do anything at the high school that, that they are interested in participating in. Um, there is not a problem with Georgia High School Association. Um, uh, the Athletic Association, they're still eligible, all of that kind of stuff. Dual enrollment courses do uh, receive extra weight on a final grade. Um, that happens both at your school, but also really at most colleges when they are looking at initial freshman acceptance, they're gonna give some weight to dual enrollment courses that a student took while they were in high school. And dual enrollment core courses meet the academic rigor requirement for HOPE. So um, students have to have at least four courses on their high school transcript that meet an academic rigor requirement for HOPE scholarship. Any dual enrollment core course that a student may take, that means math, English, social studies, science, foreign language, will meet that academic rigor requirement. Uh, next slide, please. All right, so eligibility for dual enrollment. Who gets to go? When can you start? Um, 
when um, the legislature passed House Bill 444 in May of 2020, um, that took away ninth grade eligibility for dual enrollment. Ninth graders really are no longer eligible to participate in dual enrollment. In the 10th grade, students can enroll in any um, CTAE course that they may want to pursue at a participating technical college. That's assuming that they qualify to enter the technical college. Um, for students who have a qualifying SAT or ACT score, 10th graders can go ahead and start taking their dual enrollment courses. They are going to be accessing their 30 hours of dual enrollment funding regardless of when they start. Next slide, please. Most of our students begin dual enrollment in the 11th and or 12th grade. Um, and and that's, that's just a more typical trajectory. Students in 11th and 12th grade who wanna participate can take any course they want. The only thing is they have to get into, they must meet post-secondary requirements. So they've got to get accepted to the college that they wanna do their dual enrollment with, which means they have to meet those criteria, whatever they might be. Um, and they can continue to access coursework there and participate in dual enrollment um, until they've used up all of their funding. And then they can, if they choose to, self-pay to continue dual enrollment. Um, dual enrollment program, our dual enrollment program allows eligible high school students to earn college credit while they're working on their high school diploma. So some of the courses that they're taking at the college are gonna count for high school requirements. English 1101, for example, counts as a British Lit course. Um, it can substitute for that senior English course. So they're earning those, those credits simultaneously. Um, Dual enrollment funding will only pay for those courses that are approved. The approved course list is available at georgiafutures.org for both technical and four-year colleges and universities. You will look up courses by college. So if you are interested in doing that, that's how you access that. It is um, a public um, directory, so anybody can see that. Next slide, please. There are limits on state funded dual enrollment and a lot of these um, came into play in, in that May uh, 2020 legislation. So for some of you who may have had an older student who went through dual enrollment a few years ago, some of these rules are new and, and you, um, you haven't seen them <laughs> prior to now. So um, there are limits on state funded dual enrollment. Um, students can only take 15 hours a semester maximum or 12 hours a quarter. That's the maximum hours they can access at any given time. Um, I'm gonna skip the current dual enrollment students with the 30, the additional hours because really we've gone through that. Um, really no student is gonna, that isn't gonna apply to, to a current dual enrollment student. Um, first time dual enrollment students who uh, beginning in May of 20, um, their participation is funded and capped at 30 semester or 45 quarter hours. So once they've gone to school for 30 hours and earned 30 hours of credit, then they don't have any more dual enrollment funding. That is a hard cap. There really are no exceptions to that. Um, students who participate in option B um, we're given some additional funding if they were option B prior to May of 20. Again, most of those students have worked their way through the pipeline and have graduated. We do have a handful around the state who are still finishing up an option B program, but there are very few. Anybody who moved into option B after May of 20 is subject to the 30 hour funding cap or 45 quarter hours. Um, students who have reached that funding cap may be eligible for HOPE grant and for the HOPE career grant. They will um, access that through the technical college system. Next slide. So as you're thinking about dual enrollment, um, I, would, I, I would ask you to think through these considerations either for yourself or if you're a parent thinking about your child. Um, dual enrollment doesn't come without any consequences. So if a student goes into dual enrollment courses, they are college students. And if it doesn't go well, that is of course affecting their high school GPA, their high school transcript. It can impact whether or not a student graduates, but they also have started a college transcript. And so those grades stay, they don't go anywhere. We don't get a do-over really. 
So that, you know, it's a permanent part of their college transcript. So it's important to think about these things as you're considering whether or not this is a good fit for you or for your student. Um, first of all, are you eligible? Do you have the GPA that you need? Do you have the test scores that you need? Um, are you self-motivated? There's a lot less hand-holding at the college level than there is at, at your high school. Um, students have to be proactive. They've got to complete assignments kind of on their own. Not that there's no help available. You're going to hear from colleges and they're going to share with you lots of resources, but students really have to seek those resources out. Um, and so they've got to be proactive about that and, and learning to study if they don't already know how to do that well. They need to get assignments completed on time. They need to attend regularly. Um, while colleges take attendance and attendance matters, and you certainly can be dropped from a class if you don't attend, it is not the same as attendance at your high school where you have an attendance officer or an attendance secretary or an attendance assistant principal or somebody who's tracking that and contacting parents when kids aren't there, things like that. It's, it's just not gonna look like that. Um, are you a fairly independent learner? Not that, again, not that there's no help available. Obviously they can go to their teacher or their professor and, and seek out that help, but they're gonna need to do that on their own. Um, most college instructors don't really wanna hear from, from a parent. <laughs> they're, they wanna hear from the student. If there's a question, a need, um, an extenuating circumstance, something like that, the student's gonna need to communicate that directly to the teacher um, and not really work through the parent. So if that's not, a situation that your child is comfortable with, dual enrollment may not, we, you just might not be ready for that yet. Um, dual enrollment students do continue to be high school students. And so they may not be on their high school campus, but um, particularly for seniors, you know, senior week, um, all of those kinds of activities we need seniors to do um, to prepare for graduation, graduation practices, all those kind of things. Students need to keep up with that. They're, and they're not on campus often. A lot of the time, they're not actually on their high school campus. So they're not hearing morning announcements. They're not seeing um, the, the announcements that are posted on the, on the um, CCTV running through the school. They're not running into teachers. A teacher's not gonna grab them in the hallway and say, hey, I need you at this event next Tuesday. Or that, that just isn't kind of those um, interactions aren't going to happen so as often anyway. So you've got to be pretty proactive in keeping up with what's going on at your high school as well. And the other piece I would say, and this is kind of a big one, particularly if you have an athlete or a student who's involved in a lot of extracurricular activities, that positive academic behavior is really important. <clears throat> so regardless of what that after school schedule looked like, regardless of what time you got home from the tennis match, if you've got an eight o'clock class the next morning, you're expected to be there, right? And it doesn't, it doesn't matter that the basketball team got home at one o'clock in the morning. And that happens. I mean, we all know that happens, but you have to, you have to be um, disciplined enough to, to continue to do what you need to do for your college classes. Next slide, please. So how does dual enrollment work? Um, it is written in the law and also in the regulations that advisement that you are given the information about dual enrollment prior to February 1st every year. That's one of the, one of the functions of our meeting tonight. Um, students must apply and be accepted to the post-secondary institution they wish to attend. So that, I, I, that's a step that a lot of times I think folks um, don't necessarily understand. You have, so if you want to go to Clayton State or you want to go to Georgia Military College for your dual enrollment, you're going to have to apply to that school. You will apply as a dual enrollment student, but you're going to have to apply. They got to know you want to come. And then the second piece to that is you're going to complete the online dual enrollment funding application. Um, and you'll do the funding app each semester and the participation agreement once a year, unless you change schools. So if you move from one high school to another, you'll have to do a new funding application. Okay. Next slide, please. Students enrolling in an approved dual enrollment course, and we're gonna talk about that a little more in just a second, through the university system or the technical college system or a, or a private college that participates in dual enrollment, don't pay any tuition, mandatory fees, and your books are provided. If a student is taking a non-approved course, which means that it isn't eligible for dual enrollment funding, then um, 
that isn't necessarily true. You're going to certainly pay the tuition, but you also may be paying some fees and you're probably going to have to provide your own book. There are a handful of courses and experiences that, is, that a child may have that um, even under dual enrollment funding that um, result in some specific fees. A lot of times this is going to be um, a science class. There are some CTE lab courses that may have a fee that the student will have to pay or equipment or something that is going, the student's going to keep. Um, a uniform or something like that, that a student may have to purchase. So it's important to know that before you register for the course. Next slide, please. Dual enrollment courses. This is a, this is a fairly um, kind of nuanced thing to understand. So when a student is taking dual enrollment courses, they have 30 hours of available funding. That is not part of Hope Scholarship. So if I do my 30 hours of dual enrollment funding and I graduate from high school and I'm HOPE eligible and I, and I go to um, the University of North Georgia, my 127 hours of HOPE scholarship are still mine. I haven't used up any of that taking dual enrollment in high school. So it's important to know that. Um, and they don't count in my college HOPE eligibility. So my college transcript won't, um, be negatively impacted, at least not immediately, um, by my dual enrollment courses. However, dual enrollment courses do also get calculated into the high school grade point average. And so if I take dual enrollment courses and I make very low grades, that's going to be factored into my high school HOPE GPA and could really impact my initial eligibility. So if I don't do well, and my GPA drops to a 2.7, I that's my high school GPA, and I am no longer eligible for Hope Scholarship as a, as a beginning freshman. Um, and so, yeah, dual enrollment classes do affect that, that, that initial Hope eligibility via your high school GPA. Okay, next slide. Students who have reached the funding cap can begin to use hours from HOPE Grant or HOPE Career Grant if they meet the requirements of HOPE Grant. And HOPE Grant has some different qualifications than dual enrollment. Um, and the program that they are, the courses they're taking and the program they're in are eligible for HOPE Grant funding. Um, I encourage you to, particularly if your student's looking at option B, to check out these links to HOPE Grant um, I am not an expert in HOPE Grant. I, I don't pretend to be. Um, and really your student's gonna access those monies after they have finished using the dual enrollment money. So um, uh, that funding might be available. It is not necessarily available. Um, if your student is taking 12 semester hours or 15 quarter hours, they're considered a full-time dual enrollment student. They don't really need to take additional classes at their home school. Math does have some special criteria and your student could may want to take some classes at the high school. Um, they just wouldn't necessarily have to do that. Students do need to maintain satisfactory academic progress at the college to continue participating in dual enrollment. So they can't um, make very low grades in their dual enrollment courses and not be making some progress and continue to participate no matter what kind of hours they have left of uh, funding. Um, they, they have to continue to, to be successful. Um, House Bill 444 did introduce some withdrawal and retake policies that we did not have previously. Um, the big picture of this essentially is know that the state is, Georgia Student Finance is not gonna pay for a student to take a course twice, whatever the reason might be, whether they failed the course, they withdrew early from the course, or they pass the course, but want to perhaps take it again for a higher grade. They can't use dual enrollment funding for that. If a student um, does withdraw from a course um, and receives a W, a WD, or a WF in that course, it's going to equate to an F on the high school transcript. That's how that will be factored into your high school GPA. Very important to know that. Um, students become ineligible to continue um, with dual enrollment funding after their second withdrawal. And it, again, it doesn't matter how many hours you might have left of that 30 hour um, eligibility. So if I, my first semester, if I sign up for four classes and I withdraw from two of them, the next semester I'm done, I can't do dual enrollment anymore. It's 
very important for a student to know that. You can't just sign up for classes and withdraw without some consequence. Um, if you do fail a course and wish to retake it, or you wanna continue participating after two withdrawals, um, particularly in this time we're all living through right now in the midst of a pandemic, there are some extenuating circumstance exceptions. You would make that appeal through Georgia Student Finance. They will decide whether or not that appeal is granted. Um, if you got very sick, you had a family member pass away, there are some, there are some things you can use um, as an extenuating circumstance. If your reason does, it doesn't meet one of those circumstances, Georgia Student Finance will not consider it. If it meets the circumstance, they will consider it. That doesn't mean they would grant it, but they will consider that. Okay, next slide, please. When do you self-pay? Um, I'm not gonna go through all of this. Essentially, you self-pay in kind of two scenarios. One is I've used up all my 30 hours and I wanna continue dual enrollment. Uh, the second is I still have, I'm still using dual enrollment funding, but I wanna take a course that is not eligible for funding. So um, perhaps I wanna take an art class at the college. Um, that's not gonna be eligible. The only courses that are eligible for dual enrollment funding are math, science, social studies, language arts, English, foreign language, and career tech courses, CTAE courses. Nothing else is eligible. That doesn't really leave a whole lot else, but fine arts are not covered, nor is any kind of physical education PE course. Um, so if a student wants, you know, they're over there all day and they want to take a, a PE class because the school's got a pool and they want to swim every day, that's great. You're going to have to pay for that yourself. Um, it is very important to know that when a student is self-paying and they are only self-paying, so there's no dual enrollment money being used, those students are no longer eligible for waived fees or um, to have book costs covered. Um, so that's, that's really important. So you're not, students obviously are gonna pay the tuition for those courses, but they're also gonna pay any kind of activity fee, classroom fee, lab fee, anything like that. They're also gonna have to buy the books. Um, so it's very important to know that. Um, okay, next slide. Self-pay um, is available. You, you can self-pay once you've used up all your hours. Um, there are, you do want to be sure that you have um, talked to your counselor the same way that you would if you were still using dual enrollment funding. Your high school counselor must know what courses you're taking and whether or not, again, I would go back to the most important thing is that we graduate from high school. It's a terrible scenario for a student to do dual enrollment and be fairly successful and, and earn college credit, but somewhere along the way, miss a high school requirement to graduate and not get a diploma. We certainly don't, that's just terrible. We don't want that to happen. So staying in contact with your high school counselor, whether you're using Georgia student finance money or you're self-paying is critical. Um, Self-pay dual credit course by definition is a post-secondary course. It can be virtual. It's taken by an eligible high school student at an eligible post-secondary institution and the student will receive credit at the high school for this course as well. Whether that is high school requirement or high school elective or whatever, but that credit is gonna be counted at the high school. Um, students who wish to take more than the funded 30 hours must pay this, the required tuition fees, books, and any other related expenses that can include parking, there, any of those kinds of things. Um, courses need to be chosen again from the, the um, approved course directory or the approved list of self-pay courses. Um, parents, the parent and or student is responsible for any, fee, any course that is taken um, I'm sorry, for any course that the student takes that is not on that approved course directory. So this is gonna be those kind of fine arts courses or a physical education course. Um, those courses will not be awarded high school credit in Henry County and they won't count towards full-time dual enrollment status. Um, before the student registers for those self-pay dual credit courses, the, the student needs to complete and submit the self-pay course approval form, again, to the high school counselor to be sure that even though you're paying for it, we're taking the right courses that we need to take. Okay, next slide. All right, the application process. Um, 
So the first thing is you're gonna want, if you're really interested in this, um, you need to schedule a meeting with your counselor to discuss your interests, your options, whether or not you are eligible um, and where you are in terms of graduation requirements. Um, you need to take the appropriate test to gain admission to the university, the college that you want to attend. You also need to check and see if you meet the GPA requirements for college admission. Um, you need to submit any and all required documentation to the college. So uh, the colleges may need or require further documentation, your social security card, your driver's license, um, a vaccine record, um, any of that kind of stuff. Um, and the student will need to submit all that. Um, after acceptance is received, the student and parent uh, will meet with the counselor again. And here's where you actually talk about what courses do you need to take and complete that kind of course registration and agreements. That's very important, critical meeting, mandatory for y'all. Um, after acceptance is received, the student will then complete the dual enrollment funding and online application, and that's at georgiafutures.org. So there are really two applications you're completing. Um, then you register for those dual enrollment classes that we've all agreed on. Um, and that needs to happen at least 10 days prior to the university deadline. Um, you will get a copy of your college schedule. Generally speaking, that means you're gonna download it, print it out, or you're gonna download it and have it on a device. And you'll give a copy to your high school counselor so they can verify that you again are in the courses that y'all agreed on and that you're working towards graduation requirements. Um, at the end of the semester, the college will provide the high school counselor with a copy of the transcript. The student can also do that. Um, the college will come behind and do that. So, um, the student can do that, particularly if, if um, you're in a little bit of a time crunch. Steps one through nine need to be completed each semester or quarter that the student wishes to enroll in dual enrollment. So it, it, um, it's not a one shot, like we get all this done and we never have to do it again. You have to do it every semester. Next slide. And that's it for me. That's kind of an overview of dual enrollment in Georgia. And I'm gonna turn it back over to Sean. Thank you, Ms. Fanny. Thank you for that um, overview so our parents really understand the process and understand the steps they have to take. And now also, I'm sure in the Q&A, they've been asking about college admissions and grade levels and all of those things. So now we have presentations from Clayton State University, Georgia Military College, Gordon State College, Georgia State University, Southern Crescent Technical College, and Georgia Student Finance Commission, who makes all of this funding happen. So we will go ahead and get started with Clayton State University. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for having us from Clayton State University. My name is Leah Miles, and I'm going to present our admissions requirements for Clayton State. Next slide. So for Clayton State University, you can see there's a QR code. You can actually take a snapshot of that real quick, and it'll take you straight to our website. But for Clayton State, our classes are offered in the summer, in the spring, as well as in the fall. Uh, it was already mentioned that 30 credit hours is the cap for a lifetime dual enrollment. Um, we offer classes at the Henry County location in the Academy for Advanced Studies. And so we actually have professors that come to the Academy that teach our dual enrollment classes there in Henry County. Uh, we also have classes on our main campus, we have a ton of online classes and we have a Peachtree City Fayette County location as well. Next slide. The requirements for Clayton State University are listed here. We do require a minimum of a 3.0 GPA and the SAT, ACT and AccuPlacer scores are listed there. Most students know what the SAT and ACT are, but the AccuPlacer is not always familiar to everyone. So the AccuPlacer is also a placement exam that a student can take actually with Clayton State. We offer the exam and you get your results immediately. So that's the benefit of taking the AccuPlacer exam. We will be offering the AccuPlacer at the Academy um, during the day, during the school day. So for students who are taking any classes over there that may be interested, you need to talk with your high school counselor and see if uh, you can fit that in your schedule to take the AccuPlacer with us at the Academy. Yes. So for eligibility for Clayton State University, students have to have completed the 10th grade. So you, so you have to complete the 10th grade. Now, if you're currently in the 10th grade and you still wanna apply because you know you'll be a junior in August, then that's fine. 
but you won't be accepted until after you complete the 10th grade. So you can do all the process and paperwork, but you won't be accepted until after the 10th grade. Students have to complete two years of English and two years of math, uh, one of them being college algebra. Also, we talked about completing the um, funding application. And so that's something where um, you would be applying for funding to pay for this because we know that dual enrollment is tuition free, but the state would, would uh, complete the payment process by awarding you the funding, but the parent actually has to sign off on that. So that's all done through Georgia Futures. And there's a great representative here from Georgia, Fu Georgia Student Finance that will talk to you about that in a few minutes. Also, we really encourage you to, to talk with your counselor, talk with your parent and have a real clear understanding of what dual enrollment is because the impact that these classes can have don't only affect your high school transcript and your high school education, but also your uh, future college education. So there could be a very long-term effect. Um, so we really want you to be sure that you understand what you're getting yourself into. We also have our admissions and enrollment process, which we'll cover on the next slide. So for us to get started, the first thing we say is meet with your high school counselor. Meet with your high school counselor, find out if this is a good fit for you. If you decide that you wanna move forward, then we have three super easy steps. You apply to our college, you complete our admissions application, you submit your test scores. And again, if you don't have test scores and you would like to take our AccuPlacer exam, um, the website there, and I'll also have a um, QR code so you can, uh, take a snapshot of that to find out about our testing options. And so there will be test score requirements. And then the third thing would be, we need that high school transcript. So we need to be sure that you've completed the 10th grade as well as that 3.0 GPA that's required. After you're accepted, there are a few other things that need to be completed. So we'll get like your immunization records and um, we'll make sure that you completed your funding application. And then there's an online orientation. And your final thing would be to meet with your um, Clayton State University advisor, and that would be me for Henry County. So we would then talk about what your schedule is going to look like. Next. I wanted to share with you an example of what a Clayton State uh, schedule could look like. This is a very common schedule. So most of our classes are, are two days per week and approximately an hour and 20 minutes for each class. And so typically, like in high school, you take classes Monday through Friday. But for Clayton State, we have classes that are offered on Monday and Wednesday or Tuesday and Thursday. So in this example here, you see at 8.30 to 10.10, there's a math class that you would take on Monday and Wednesday, college algebra, Monday and Wednesday, 8.30 to 10.10. On Tuesday and Thursday from 8.30 to 10.10, you would take English. So you would complete two classes in just that one block. Keep in mind, when you take a class at Clayton State, that math class that's taken that one semester counts for a full year in high school. So you're taking a class on Monday and Wednesday from 8.30 to 10.10, you're taking math on Monday and Wednesday, and that will count for a full year at, at the high school. And you'll come back next semester and take a new set of classes. So this is an example, it's only two courses, which is you know, um, about what most students start with, and that's six college credit hours for Clayton State. So you had a 30 cap and that's six hours with those two classes. So that would leave you with 24 additional hours that you could take advantage of. Next slide. And our contact information is listed there. Uh, again, my name is Leah Miles. If you would take a picture, a quick picture of the QR code, that will just take you straight to us and it'll give you the information you need. Reach out to us and I will also type uh, my contact information in the chat as well. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Deanna Kelly and I'm one of the assistant directors at Georgia State University. And I'll be talking to you about our programs at the Atlanta campus as well as Perimeter College campus. Next slide, please. All right, so if you want to navigate through the admissions process at Georgia State University, you can contact myself and my email um, information is listed there. You can also contact Peter Vilek. He's one of my coworkers that also works with the dual uh, enrollment admissions office. 
Now, if you have anything pertaining to admissions requirements, testing, processing, receiving transcripts, or even continuing at Georgia State as a freshman, you can contact us. However, once you get admitted to Georgia State University as a dual enrollment student, you're gonna be dealing with uh, the dual enrollment office. And so they're going to help you with the dual enrollment funding application process, as well as registering for classes um, and all those different things, all right? So just keep that in mind. Next slide, please. Now, when it comes to Georgia State, there are some things that you want to keep in mind. You are uh, enrolled as a non-degree seeking student, so you cannot uh, assign be assigned a major. Um, you can take classes during the fall, spring, or summer semester, and we're going to talk about why that's important a little later. Um, and you do have access to all campus facilities, clubs, and student life, including libraries. However, you can't register for any Greek organizations. Next slide, please. Now, also, um, as mentioned before, your tuition is completely covered by the Georgia Student Finance Commission. Um, all fees are waived. However, um, when it comes to obtaining your textbooks or even access codes, those are loaned to you, so you don't have to worry about paying for that. However, there are some things that are unique to Georgia State uh, that you will be required for. So if you are taking any foreign language or science classes, you may be uh, required to pay for the lab fees. It's usually a minimal cost, about $50, um, because Georgia State is primarily a you know, commuter campus, and we do we are in the middle of the city of Atlanta. If you do decide to come on the Atlanta campus, you will have to pay for parking and or transportation. And then if you decide to eat on campus, um, you also will be required to pay for those meals. Next slide, please. Now, when it comes to our programs, we actually have two different programs as far as dual enrollment at Georgia State University. Um, and so we have the Atlanta campus where you can attend the Atlanta campus or you can attend any one of our perimeter college campuses. So it doesn't matter which one you go to or you can take classes online. So the rule of thumb is if you want to attend all of your classes online, you're going to register or apply for perimeter college. All right. Now, if you're somebody who, you know, you want the experience of the Atlanta campus, you can enroll in the Atlanta campus, but just keep in mind that all your classes are going to be in person. Similarly, we might have some students who want to particularly take some upper level courses. So maybe they want some rigorous uh, foreign language courses or even science or math courses. You will have to take a placement exam, but those will probably be offered to you at the Atlanta campus. Now for both programs, we do require a 3.0 core GPA requirement. all right? Now for the Atlanta campus, our test score requirements are going to be more rigorous than the perimeter college campuses, all right? So you can see there below, um, the SAT requirements are 580 for English, 560 for math, 23 ACT for English and math, um, and you have to have completed algebra two. Now for perimeter, there is an additional uh, requirement that we will accept. So we will accept in addition to the SAT, ACT, the ACCUPLACER. So only perimeter college campuses or online um, through perimeter will we accept the ACCUPLACER. So you can see the different score requirements below. And just keep in mind that once you do apply for um, the Perimeter College campus, you can take the Accuplacer either on campus at Georgia State or even online through our partner um, with the Accuplacer. Next slide, please. All right, so here are the next steps for the dual enrollment process at Georgia State University. Of course, you wanna meet with your high school counselor to make sure you are eligible for uh, dual enrollment. And then you're gonna submit your Georgia State application through the portal. So through the Georgia State website, you are not gonna use the common app. Uh, the website is listed for you in front. 
Now the application is completely free. So if you get to the end of the portal and it requires for you to pay, please stop and email either myself or my colleague, Peter Vilek, and we will show you how to navigate through the application so that way your fee is waived. And then of course you submit your funding application through Georgia Futures. Make sure students that you include your social security number so that way you won't have any problems. And then you wanna to submit to Georgia State your high school transcripts and either your SAT, ACT, or your AccuPlacer test scores by our deadlines. All of this inf information is listed on our website at www.gsu.edu. You can just type in dual enrollment and um, everything is listed, including what are the requirements for the testing. So thank you so much for your time and I'm sending it back to you. Hi everyone, my name is Lisa Kohler. I'm the dual enrollment advisor at Georgia Military College at the Fayetteville campus. Um, next slide. So um, one big thing a lot of people ask about Georgia Military College is that um, they always inquire about the military obligation. There is absolutely no military obligation whatsoever at our school. And on our campus, we do not even have um, a cadet program. So GMC has been nominated for best value college in America. We're one of the 10 best college, community colleges as um, identified by CNN. So um, we have a great program. Um, next slide, slide please. Uh, some of the benefits, small class sizes. I tell my students all the times, um, if you're concerned, have questions, unsure about something, email your instructor, talk to your instructor. That's one of the beauties of being a small school. The instructors want our students to do well and they're always open to talk to the students. We have free tutoring, we have flexible schedules. I noticed in the chat boxes, a lot of people were inquiring about, um, are you required to be on campus? GMC has several options. We have the traditional NC. We have hybrid classes, which uh, two thirds of the class does meet on the campus and one third is done online. We have a relatively new program, remote classes or synchronous classes, where students are required to log in at specific times and they attend a class, which may be in Valdosta or Milledgeville or anywhere over the state. So there is a little bit of that accountability, but also the flexibility and that the student does not have to worry about transportation to the campus. We also have online classes. As I said, we have one-on-one advising. One -on -one advising. We have transferable credits. I know a lot of people are asking about your follow on uh, programs and we are more than we welcome you to make an appointment and we can look at where you're wanting to go and help you identify classes that may be applicable to where you wanna go. Um, as always, we um, encourage students um, to reach out to those schools to make to confirm transferability. But uh, we do have some tables and some resources where we can help you get started. Next, sl next slide, please. Um, we do require that you've completed your sophomore year. We do have a lot of students who will start summer after completing their sophomore year. We require a minimum GPA of 2.5. Uh, we do not require um, any type of formalized standardized testing, no ACT or um, ACT, um, no AccuPlacer. What we do as far as um, class uh, selection, when we look at your class selection, we wanna look at your high school transcript. That's how we will identify if you're ready for college algebra or if you're ready for college English. So the high school uh, transcript is very important in placing you in classes. Next slide. Okay, um, as I just mentioned, obviously these scores are very helpful, but they are not required. Next slide. Okay. Um, we have uh, the application process. Uh, you can submit an application through our website. Use the promo, promo code DEFAY -E to um, waive the application fee. Uh, if you do have scores, we would love those. We will need your transcripts. So um, there's also a video. I believe Mr. Um, Rajan is going to be uh, putting that link in the uh, chat box. We have a wonderful YouTube video that does a great, offers a great explanation of our program and the process. Um, next slide. All right, and that's our contact information. And our motto is start here, go anywhere. Um, we've had so many, so many graduates who've left GMC and have, they've gone all over the state. And we have several, we have several DE students who are looking at very rigorous universities all over the country. So that's our goal is to prepare you to go anywhere. So thank you and y'all have a good evening.
Good evening. Uh, my name is Cynthia Jacobs, and I am the dual enrollment coordinator here at Gordon State College. Um, I don't know. Can everyone hear me? Uh, yes. Okay. Okay, good. Uh, there's something going crazy with the screen. I apologize. Um, dual enrollment at Gordon State. Uh, we have two locations. Um, our main campus is in Barnesville, Georgia, and we have a satellite campus um, in Henry County. It's at the Academy for Advanced Studies, of course, in McDonough. Um, at Gordon, we offer classes um, daily. Um, we also offer classes uh, during the evening and online. Next screen. You can go ahead and change. Okay, for dual enrollment, the admission requirements are um, you need an academic GPA of a 3.0, um, completion of two uh, English and math uh, required high school courses. Um, we do require test scores. Um, our scores are located up on the screen. We do accept the uh, SAT, ACT, or the Accuplacer. Um, we do offer the Accuplacer on main campus and also um, at the Henry County location. Um, for students to take um, any higher level math courses, such as college algebra, which is math 1111, um, we do require um, higher scores and you can see those scores up there. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, for dual enrollment at Gordon, our uh, required admissions documents are um, you need to complete an online application. Our applications are free. You will find that at gordonstate.edu. Um, we also need an official high school transcript. You can request your high school counselor to go ahead and send that into us. Um, and again, as I mentioned, we do require test scores and we do accept the SAT, the ACT, or those Accuplacer scores. Next slide. Um, on main campus, again, which is in Barnesville, we offer on-site advising and registration. Again, Accuplacer testing. Um, we have computer labs. Of course, we have a state-of-the-art library. Um, we offer through our Student Success Center um, free tutoring for all students. Um, we do have a counseling and accessibility um, staff here on campus. Of course, uh, we have a Student Activity and Recreation Center, and that is available for all dual enrollment students. Um, and we also offer 16 associate degrees. And of course, we do have summer classes. Next slide. Oh, there we go. Um, at our McDonough location, um, again, we do offer on-site advising and registration. Um, again, we do offer that Accuplacer test there. Uh, one requirement just to keep in mind when you schedule that Accuplacer test is you do need to have already completed um, an application. So make sure you go ahead and complete that application. Then you can go ahead and call the office there and they can set up an Accuplacer test for you. Um, at McDonough, we also all have, um, I'm sorry, a computer lab and study space. We offer math tutoring. Um, at that location also, we do have classes for traditional students. And we offer an associates in uh, business administration and associates in general studies. Um, there is transportation to that location offered through Henry County Schools. You'll want to check with your high school, though, for exact um, times for that. Next slide. OK, um, as I said, uh, I am here on main campus. I'm the dual enrollment coordinator. Um, feel free to go ahead and call or email me. At our McDonough location, um, we have Miss Christy McAbee. She's our program administrator there. Um, she is wonderful and a big help with dual enrollment. So you can, of course, um, call her or certainly email you. And if you do have any questions about Gordon State, feel free to go ahead um, and again, contact us or put those in the chat box. And thank you. All right, good evening, everyone. My name is Drew Todd. I'm with Southern Crescent Technical College, and Leah Santer uh, is also on tonight doing the Q&A in the chat. You've probably been talking with her also from Southern Crescent Technical College. I'm going to give you a quick overview of our program. Uh, some of this stuff is a reiteration, so I'll go through it pretty quickly. Um, of course, dual enrollment is where you take college classes while you're in high school. At Southern Crescent Tech, those classes can be technical. That would be what you think of it. The high school is like CTAE courses or it can be academic core classes, English, math, science, social studies. Some students will come and just take academic classes with us. 
Some students know what type of career they want to go into, and they're ready to take the specific occupational classes, things like culinary arts, computer classes, healthcare, um, welding, automotive. So some students will come and take those. Some students will do a mixture of both. They'll take both academic and technical courses. It's so really just up to the student and what their ultimate goals are. We do have 28 core academic classes at the Technical College System of Georgia that Southern Crescent Tech is a part of that are guaranteed to transfer to any university system of Georgia school. Now, of course, you get college credit for these college classes. You also get high school credit that's been discussed previously uh, with the classes at Southern Crescent Tech, though, because of the technical option. When you come and take, for example, uh, uh, welding class, you're not going to get an English credit for that class. You actually get a high school elective credit when you take one of those CTAE type courses at our college. If you come and do an academic core class in English, math, science or social studies, you're going to get the equivalent high school academic credit. And of course, just like it's been mentioned before, tuition fee and book costs are covered at Southern Crescent for dual enrolled students. Sometimes there will be tools or uniform costs. Those are usually attached to our technical classes. Um, so if you do take one of those, sometimes there will be costs that aren't covered by the dual enrollment grant. But for the most part, everything is covered tuition fee and books. 10th, 11th, and 12th grade to be dual enrolled at Southern Crescent Tech. 10th graders can come in and meet our regular admissions requirements and take occupational, the technical classes. Uh, if they have a 1200 SAT or a 26 ACT as a 10th grader, they can take academic core and use the dual enrollment grant. 11th and 12th graders can do academic or to and or technical classes using the dual enrollment grant and they just meet our regular college admission standards. Right now through the summer semester, we can actually use a 2.0 high school GPA for admissions. If you have that, we do not need any test scores for you at Southern Crescent Tech. Um, for the fall semester, the system, the technical college system is not determined if they will extend that GPA requirement into the fall. So if a student starts in summer, we can let them in with a 2.0, they can continue on as a dual enrollee. If they're planning to start in August for the fall semester, we would work with them at this point to get test scores. We can use PSAT, PACT, SAT, ACT. And if you don't have any of those, we also have the AccuPlacer that we offer on our campus free of charge for potential dual enrollment students. We have a one page application students complete and of course we encourage you to talk to your high school counselor for the steps on their end. These are the course options that are in Henry. I will not read these off to you. Um, and these are not all of the course options for Southern Crescent Tech. So we have several locations, but our Henry County Center that's in McDonough, very close to the Academy for Advanced Studies, offers the programs that you see here, along with core academic classes. Um, of course, students can take classes at Henry and Griffin, at any of our locations that they like, they can take them online. They can mix and match campuses and online classes to make their schedule. They'll work with their Southern Crescent advisor and their counselor to make sure that all the pieces of the schedule fit together so that they meet their high school graduation requirements and take the classes that are in those areas they're interested in. We do offer some classes at the Academy for Advanced Studies. Right now we offer cosmetology classes there for dual enrollment so students can actually take them on the campus of the Academy. For the 22-23 school year, we're planning to expand and offer, in addition to cosmetology, culinary arts and EMT. We're currently finalizing those plans, so we'll be working with uh, the school system, hopefully to finalize plans for those additional two programs in the coming weeks. Um, the school system has run buses from uh, the academy to our Henry County Center. It's maybe five minutes away, if that, um, and so they sometimes will run buses uh, during school hours, so if you take a class that begins or ends outside of school hours, that busing would not be available. To get started, talk to your counselor. Uh, we, I mentioned myself and Leah are the Southern Crescent reps that work with Henry County students. Because it's such a large county, we split it. Uh, Leah works with student, well, I work with Stockbridge High, Woodland High, and Eagles Landing High School students. All other high school students will work with Leah. Our email address is there, and I'll also type it into the chat so that if you don't catch it on this slide, you can get it then. The dual enrollment admissions requirements are already discussed. We can use your GPA through the summer and maybe beyond. We're just not sure yet for the fall, so we'll work with you on the test scores as needed beyond summer. Uh, the dual enrollment grant, you've heard about that on Georgia Futures. And of course, we'll work with you and your counselor to make sure you get the classes that you need. And this is our contact information one last time, but like I said, I am going to put it into the chat as well. Uh, I appreciate all of you being here and thank you for having us. Uh, we look forward to working with you. I always encourage students at this point in the presentation to start the process now. It's 
a lot easier to, to drop classes and change your mind at the last minute than it is to add them. So we'd rather work with you now, get everything done well in advance so that we can make sure everything is in place and compatible with your high school schedule and what you need to graduate. And we look forward to hearing from you soon. Thanks. Thank you right. so much to all of our partner class, partner colleges. And so now we'll have Georgia Student Finance Commission. All righty, my name is Lakisa Jackson. I am the um, outreach specialist or a representative for Henry County. And I am going to walk you guys through how to access the um, application for dual enrollment. So we'll go ahead and click there. And I am going to put the link. You're muted, Ms. Jackson. Oh, wow. Okay, let me start over. <laughs> Uh, my name is Lakisa Jackson. I am the outreach representative for Henry County um, Georgia Student Finance Commission representative. And I am going to show you guys how to access the application for dual enrollment. So after you've um, spoken to your counselor, you've looked at the requirements and decided what you wanted to do, you have to have a GA Futures um, account. So go ahead and click on that for me, Ms. Wyatt. Click on um, I, I clicked it. Can you guys not see it? No, it didn't. Uh, try it again. I might have to stop sharing. Hold on. Okay. And I just, um, oh, goodness. One second. Can you see it now? Yep, I see it now. And I am going to put in the chat. There's a link in the chat if you guys can click on that link or go to a different browser and copy and paste. So once you go into um, um, GA Futures website, you want to create an account. The student has to create a GA Futures account. Even if you decide not to do dual enrollment, you still need to have a GA Futures account for um, the HOPE scholarship and so forth. So go ahead and click that for me, uh, Dr. Hester. Is that you who's doing the screen? Yes. Okay. And um, did Ms. Wyatt leave you the, the login information? Uh, no, you'll have to give me that again. Okay, I'm going to put that in the chat. The, the username, click on student. You're gonna click on student and, I'm sorry. So when you click on student, you're gonna enter all this information. This is if you don't have a GA Futures account. If you do have a GA Futures account and once you create one, you're gonna go back up and you're gonna click login sign in, okay, and change that. The username is John Doe 2021 with a lowercase j. And I am going to put the password in the chat to you, Dr. Hester. So once you click on, once you log, sign in to GA Futures, it's going to take you to your profile and to enroll in dual enrollment. On the left-hand side, right there, it says my dual enrollment profile. You're going to click on that link. And here, you'll see everything that you need. It's going to tell you what to do, um, what you need to get available. All of that information is, is here. Now, we can't click apply now because my social security number is not in here, but you will need to uh, um, click apply now and it'll walk you through the process. Now, the key points I want to tell you, you need to meet with your counselor to make sure you are um, enrolling in the correct courses. You need to make sure you have your parents' email address. Your parents will receive, once you the student fills out the application, the parent will receive their participation agreement via email. So make sure you enter the email when you create your account and when you fill out the application. Then once the, once the student um, completes his or her portion, the parent will get the email to say, hey, you need to go ahead and sign this uh, participation agreement. And then um, once you submit your application, you'll meet with your counselor, you'll make sure you apply to the university or the college, make sure you meet the admissions, um, the admissions um, requirements. And then another thing that I want to show you guys, um, Dr. Hester, if you go up, if you for by chance don't save this link and you want to get to the application, go to the home page, press the home key for me. Yep. And right on the, on the right where it says trending topics, and you'll see at the bottom link, it says dual enrollment funding application. So 
The only real um, link you need to remember is GA Futures. GA Futures, create an account, and then you'll be able to find the dual enrollment application on our landing page, okay? Um, and then make sure, let me give you, if you have any questions, general questions about dual enrollment, I am going to put the email address in for you in the chat. And as well as, since I am the representative for your county, um, you can email me. And that's also in the chat. Are there any questions? Nope, does Georgia State. Okay, all right, thank you. Are you guys able to see the reminders page? Yes. Yes. What a wealth of information you guys just experienced. Um, everything you need to know about dual enrollment courses in Henry County Schools. So don't all run to the counseling office. Let's make sure that we are um, meeting as a team, as a family, um, to decide what are the next steps and if dual enrollment is a best option for you as a student. Um, if you do decide to do that, you want to schedule an appointment that can be a virtual appointment right now um, as we're in level four to meet with the school counselor as you work on your schedule for next year. And then you'll complete the student and parent sections of that dual enrollment application that we just showed you that Ms. Jackson walked you through. That's part one of that. And then also there is a participation agreement and a Henry County Schools checklist um, that you definitely need to make sure you read line for line to ensure you know how Henry County Schools um, processes your application and all of your deadlines. Make sure you inform your school counselor of any change that you want to make to your schedule um, for next year regarding dual enrollment. Please don't change any classes at the college level and not inform your school counselor because those classes may not be paid for and you may receive a bill at the end of the semester and we don't want that at all. Make sure that if you withdraw from a course that you do it in a timely manner and that you don't receive a WWD or a WF on your transcript, which will translate into an F and that will be calculated in your GPA. Make sure your counselor receives a copy of your transcript. Although the colleges typically forward your counselor your transcript, it is still your ultimate responsibility to ensure your school counselor receives your transcript from the university. Make sure you contact that counselor every semester in which you wanna participate in dual enrollment. Ensure you meet all of those college deadlines that they showed you and discussed and make sure that you meet with your counselor 10 days prior to that college deadline. If you wait till the day of or the day before, there may be computer glitches on the college end or on the school's end, and you may miss out on the funding window. So don't wait to the last minute. You have 10 days prior to the college deadline to get everything completed. Make sure you balance your high school courses with your college courses and make sure that you are aligning that and meeting all of those qualifications. And also, like they stated before, if you're in extracurricular activities, think about that and weigh your options on what's the best course of action for you. Um, and then when it's all said and done, make the most of this awesome opportunity. I wish I could have done this in high school um, as well and get free college, 30 hours free I'm paid for and, and save my parents some money as well. So we wanna thank you all for attending these sessions. And here is our webpage. I know it's been dropped in the chat box. The presentation is available on the website. We are um, going to upload the video shortly. So please make sure there's a QR code there when you're on the webpage, it'll bring you right to the webpage anytime you're at home or away from it. Um, so we thank you for your time and staying with us tonight. And we know you guys um, are out a little late tonight on this virtual meeting. And then also students, make sure you finish your assignments because that is a clear indicator of dual enrollment, um, of whether you're going to enroll in dual enrollment and be successful being an independent worker. So we have all of this wealth of information presented for you tonight. Make sure you research it as a family. And then when you've made a decision, then you contact your school counselor. Have a wonderful evening from Henry County Schools. See you next time.